What's up guys? Today we're gonna install uh, AMS heat exchanger on my buddy's Q60. Uh, it's just an upgrade on size basically. Uh, apparently these Q60s have issues um, heat soaking, especially when you want to put more boost in them. And uh, I got a couple other parts I'm gonna install for him, but today we're just doing this. Okay, so I realize uh, people who are going to be tuning in to this video are not going to be subscribers, followers. Um, so before I get to like the vlogging part of the video, I'm just going to talk over how to do the install so you can see real quick. Going to come behind the camera. Here we go. So to install this BMS heat exchanger or any heat exchanger, um, you're going to take off this intake um, ducting, which is just going to be six of these little fasteners, body fasteners. Flathead, pop them up, no problem. You pop that off, uh, then you're gonna take your front bumper off. But before you do that, you have to come down here underneath and take off this plate here, which is just a bunch of 10 millimeter uh, bolts. Very simple. 10 millimeter bolts underneath. Um, and then you're going to take off these 10 millimeters. There's two on each side. And then you're going to have two body bolt or body fasteners here. So those are, uh, those are going to get removed. After that, you're going to lift up this panel here. And you see this little metal tab here. That metal tab has a bolt right under here. So you got to get a little wrench in there. Take that off and that off. Basically, it holds... Uh, this bracket in uh, brings it the body line up close. Then I'm trying to get you guys some good light. Back here in your wheel well, there's one body uh, body fastener right here holding the wheel well off. On you got to take that off, and there is a bolt directly behind here, 10 millimeter, that comes down. Uh, after that, you're going to try and see if you can um, disconnect these fog lights and if you have bumper sensors they're going to be in there too. After you take off the front bumper it's pretty simple it's just going to be the styrofoam covering the um, the actual metal bumper and then eight bolts four on each side for the bumper. Once you take that off there's a couple connectors on the, the bumper the metal bumper and then that's it you, you uninstall the heat exchanger or reinstall the bigger one, which the kits for these cars are pretty simple to do. Uh, there's not much fabricating to do at all. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps you guys on a quick little run through. And then you guys can go ahead and watch the vlog if you're still interested. So I got the car jacked up. I already took off the uh, dust guard that was underneath. It wasn't too bad. It was a lot of, uh, there's all the hardware. There's a lot of 10 millimeter bolts and a couple of these uh, tabs that really suck if you've ever done. Just stick a flathead, pry them up slowly and hopefully don't break the plastic. I think there's tools for it, but flathead works um, at, at least on these newer cars. But yeah, I'm gonna start figuring out how I'm gonna take the front bumper off. I'm gonna take this little plastic piece off. This is actually the intake for Infinity. So I'm gonna take that off real quick and then come back to you guys. So when taking off the front bumper, uh, I heard that it's hard to remember. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right back here on this side. It holds the front on. So you just lift this up, put a little wrench in there, take that off. Then I'm gonna go underneath and see what's hooked up underneath before I remove the top. I don't want it sagging, leaning forward and messing up the bottom mounting plates. So got the front bumper off. So here's the front bumper. I'm pretty sure he had the fenders rolled, so it was kind of hard to get the bolt that's right here, the fender well goes here, and there's a bolt here, and then these clips. Uh, these clips are pretty in there, so you gotta tug a little bit. I was worried that there was still uh, something bolted in maybe, but uh, you can see right here, there's these three slots. And so you gotta you know pull on a little bit hard uh, to get it to come off those 
tabs. Uh, I'm gonna try, I got a helmet cam over there. Uh, I'm gonna try a head cam uh, for a POV so you guys can see me as I'm doing it. I like the tripod setup, but I feel like every time that I do a tripod setup, I end up just standing in the way. So uh, do a, I'll do a headshot, uh, leave a comment in the uh, comments below and let me know if you like the head cam or if you just like me replacing parts and kind of pointing afterwards. Uh, I personally like to see the action maybe sped up and you can see like what's going on. Um, so yeah, just let me know what you guys like and I've got a few other parts to install on this car uh, in the week during this weekend. So yeah, let me know what you like best and I want a good quality product for you guys. But yeah, we're gonna get back to it. Uh, there's not much left. So there's four, two nuts here and then two bolts, but it just, they both come off this way. And also here, so both the left side and the right side, that's it. That's gonna pull out and then we'll be to it. Okay, head cam is active. Let me know what you guys think. I know the sound quality will not be the same. So most of the head cam stuff Front bumper is uninstalled, the uh, bash bar, whatever you want to call it. So right here, there was this sensor. This is your impact sensor, I believe. And then your coolant, some sort of coolant sensor here, or I don't know what exactly it's for. Oh, it controls this duct. Wow. I guess this is a auto flow duct it'll close when the car's warming up and then open when you're going down the highway or if it's real cold outside and the car starts dropping in temp it'll close and stop airflow that's super cool i like that it's like an active air dam i guess so we're gonna move this out of the way these just clip on we got everything off. We are now exposing the heat exchanger, small one up here. I'm just going to disconnect the hoses first, that one and that one, and uh, then we'll dis then we'll unmount the heat exchanger. But if you unmount the heat exchanger before disconnecting the hose, when you pull the hose, it's going to move the heat exchanger around. So that's just a quick tip for anyone who's removed radiators or anything or who hasn't. Uh, maybe it should help you out. I'm going to get back to it. Hope you guys are liking the uh, head cam. Woo! All right. Got the old one removed. Now it's just the radiator. Uh, just be very careful when sliding it out. So you have this front support here. Um, just be very careful not to damage any fins on the radiator. It'll affect cooling. And when installing the new part, you want to make sure you don't want to damage either of the fins because that's a brand new sweet part. We'll do a little size comparison. Um, not, only, not only is this thing bigger than this one, but look how much thicker it is. This one is like, I don't know, maybe an inch thick. And this one is about two and a half inches thick. You're gonna have a huge amount of coolant in that thing. I could definitely see why installing one of these is vital when you go and upgrade. We're done draining there. We're gonna go ahead and install. And then I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna button everything up before I bleed because I'm gonna have to run to the store and I'm gonna have to get a bleeder for this Infinity because their bleeding system is a little dumb if you ask me. So here we are, it is installed. So um, the only thing I don't like about it is the mounting hardware. So it uses these Allen head bolts and you 
put a lock washer in there. And then there's a nut on the back, little 10 mil nut. And it uses the plastic mounting points. Same as down here, this plastic uh, bar. I mean, it's your core support, but the core support is plastic now. See that? So it just mounts. Hey, you can see it a lot better down here. It mounts just like that. And I used both the very top on both ones, so I didn't have much uh, wiggle room. And it, it came out pretty straight. It was a little crooked at first, and I had to put some pressure on it. And then this will just zip tie to that. Um, I've seen people use the factory hose. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the factory hose. They come with another hose. Comes with that hose and hose clamps. But the hose it comes with is a lot smaller in diameter. So I don't like that. We'll see if we can get those to work. The, I mean, even the freaking nipples on here are big. It looks like for the factory size. So I'm not too sure what that is. I like using these mounting points here but uh, yeah I guess it has for the factory mount bolts um, I definitely like using where it's just a bolt and a nut plate so it's, for removal it's so much easier to do but I guess this will work it's definitely sturdy I'm gonna finish the install and get this bumper up we're making good time uh, let's see 130 I'm only two hours in and I've got all kinds of stuff removed and I'm starting the install process so I'm thinking another hour and a half two hours and then I'll start the bleeding process I gotta go to the auto parts store and pick up the bleeder tool so yep yeah, let's keep going here is the final product installed I use the factory coolant hose um, I use the hose clamps that come with it because the Nissan hose clamps uh, these or infinity um, they're trash. I zip tied here and I zip tied here to keep it from hitting the radiator. It's close but it's not hidden. Also to keep it from because it was moving and hitting this bar here and I don't want it to rub away eventually and him have issues down the road. So it is no longer an infinity. It is now a Nissan because it's got at least two zip ties. <sighs> Sorry bro. Uh, thanks for letting me work on your car but I downgraded it. You now got a big front mount, intercooler, and some zip ties. You're a Nissan bro now. All right, we're gonna start the install procedure. Hopefully I can get this all in one reel and nothing, no mistakes happen. In between then, that is the plan. That is what we hope for. So let's get to it. Okay, ran into a problem. Uh, I was on the install process and I was putting on the dams here. This just guides air flow to the radiator. And I went to put on this one and the hoses were in the way so I had to unclip them, unzip tie them for now. Um, but if you look, this hole here, there's nowhere for it to hook up and it's, it's in the way. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole uh, so that'll go through it. And I'm gonna try and drill it big enough so I can fit the hose on there. Well, it wasn't uh, completely easy, but almost there. I wanna make sure I have it installed as factory as possible. That way we keep that cooling that we want. Well, I finished it. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a uh, circle drill bit or a circle saw bit or step bit uh, that's big enough for it to make it aesthetically appealing, but it works and it gives this the free motion that the factory
We are done. Finish. Front bumper's on. Underneath the tray is on. Intake tray is on. Everything's good to go. Everything mounted good. Body lines still look really good. No gaps or anything. All right, I'm gonna start it up and we will see if anything happens crazy. Any leaks, whatever. Alright guys, that's going to conclude. Uh, hey! If you hear snorting, it's the dog, I promise. <laughs> but that's going to conclude uh, today, changing the BMS heat exchanger. I like the one that goes behind the front core support, but this one, it fits good. It didn't get in the way of anything. It's a pretty easy-ish install, just took a while. Uh, took me about five hours or so, um, including the bleeding, I guess. And the bleeding should be good. I tested it. Uh, there's a little trick. I use that bleeder uh, funnel, and when you rev the engine, it'll actually trick it into turning on the water pump and cycle it. So I did that a few times. Bubbles kept coming, and then they finally stopped. So hopefully it's bled well. Um, I'm going to take it on a drive later uh, to drop it back off, and I'll just watch the temperatures and... I'll tell his wife to watch the temperatures as she drives just in case uh, we run into any issues. But hope you guys uh, like this. There's going to be a couple more things on this 2018 Q60 that I'm going to upgrade. And so follow along if you're into this car. If not, just keep watching my vlog. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me if you like the GoPro head cam thing. Um, battery dies quick, so I don't know if I caught everything. Um, if you like it, if you don't like it, just let me know what you think. And we'll try and keep this uh, page interesting for you. So I appreciate the views. I actually got me a knockoff HKS flag for my uh, flags. I don't know if you've seen them back here. I got uh, LZMFG, Get Nuts Laboratory, and Weekends Are For Drift Cars. That's my favorite. But uh, yeah, we're out here. I'm going to pull this out and put the 240 back in here because it's raining and I got open hood vents and not very good for the rain. I do cap off the dump tube, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. <laughs>